Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Dan from the Nuts Nomad. If you're new here then hello and if not then welcome back. In this video I've taken you to the East Yorkshire coast which was taken the likes in of Scarborough, Whitby, Sandzen, Staves and Robin Hood's Bay. They're all here. The video is packed full of useful information and there's lots about the history of the different places. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe and if you've been to any of these places or intend to go to them drop a comment below. Whitby is about 130 miles from Nottingham and about a three hours drive. To break up our journey, we stopped in the medieval city of York. Within the circuit of its 13th century walls are a medieval spider's web of narrow streets. The most famous narrow street is the Shambles, it has a real Harry Potter vibe and is very popular with fans and has a number of Harry Potter shops as well. York Minster is often regarded as one of the most beautiful Gothic cathedrals in the world. It took about 200 years to build and it was finished in 1472. The River Ouse runs through the city and is popular for boat trips. For our trip to Yorkshire, we were very fortunate to be able to team up with a team from Persia, UK, and we got to test drive their brand new 3008 hybrid. We were travelling with a four month old child and they take so much stuff, so the 3008 was definitely appreciated for its size and it drove wonderfully. We arrived in Whitby about 5pm and it was pretty quiet as most of the day trippers had gone home. Our first mission was to find fish and chips, it's not difficult in Whitby, and we took these back to our Airbnb. Our accommodation was called Bishop's Cottage, which was on Church Street. Church Street is a popular street in Whitby and leads to the famous 199 steps. Our cottage had two bedrooms and a kitchen come living area downstairs. Whenever I'm away I always get up really early, and to be honest it's because I don't really like people in my photographs. Whitby was very quiet at half past six in the morning, so I sent my drone up over the harbour. Here are the views. On the left here you can see Whitby Abbey that towers over the seaside town. Whitby is famous for its 199 steps which are at the end of Church Street. These steps lead up to the abbey and have some incredible views across the town. I've just climbed the famous 199 steps in Whitby. I didn't count them because I got carried away taking photos, because the view is stunning. Just keep watching this. The River Esk cuts through the town and a swing bridge connects both sides of Whitby. At the top of the 199 steps sits Whitby Abbey. There's been a monastery on the site since 657 AD. In 1890, author Bram Stoker stayed on holiday in Whitby and the town provided lots of inspiration for his famous novel Dracula. Here's a time lapse of me heading back down 199 steps and a couple of photos. If you like these photos, don't forget to check out my Instagram channel at Knots Nomad, where lots more can be found. For our first morning on holiday, we stayed local and stayed in Whitby. Dan, show me your little bundle of joy. <laughs> Is he hiding? Are you hiding? Beth and I did lots of exploring, but Mia wasn't too interested. Whitby is full of traditional seaside shops that sell the likes of sticks of rock, postcards and magnets. It also has a lots of games arcades, so you can get rid of all your two peas. You right down there, Alf? We took a stroll along Whitby's West Pier, which leads to a lighthouse. It has great sea views and you can watch the boats coming in and out of the harbour. For lunch we ventured to the Rusty Shears on Silver Street. I'd arranged to meet some of our neighbours from Nottingham and that was a surprise for Beth. Mia gained her first beach experience on our first day in Whitby. Close to the East Pier in the town is the beach and as you can see here, our border terrier Alfie loved it. Alfie loves to run wild on the beach and also dig holes. He found a life boy that he tried to wrestle that you can see here. We ended our day with ice cream and also ventured to the West Cliff in the town. Some of the views that you get here over the abbey and the town centre are stunning. The following morning I jumped in the Persia and took the A174 towards Sandzend and Staves. Sandzend is a beautiful village about 3 miles north of Whitby. After saying good morning to the ducks I continued about 7 miles further north to Staves. Staves sits at a midpoint between Saltburn and Whitby. 
famous British explorer Captain James Cook lived in Staves, where he worked as an apprentice at a greengrocer. This is where it is believed that he fell in love with the sea. This is Staves Beck which runs around the outskirts of the village. If you cross the little bridge at the bottom of this shop, you can climb up to a viewpoint where you get incredible views. Just be careful of the seagulls. So today we're in the uh, Peugeot 2008 hybrid and we're taking it on the drive around the North Yorkshire Moors and we're heading towards Scarborough. Scarborough is one of the most popular seaside resorts on the Yorkshire coast. It's famous for its donkey rides, its beaches, its sticks of rocks and tacky fridge magnets. It was very hot when we were in Scarborough, so we decided to put Alfie under the pram and he enjoyed cruising around the town. Just like Whitby, there's quite a lot of traditional arcades so you can easily use all those two peas that you've been saving. Following our walk along the prom, we headed for the Princess Cafe for some shade and refreshments. I definitely recommend their ice cream sundaes. Just north of Scarborough, we stumbled upon the North Bay Railway. This miniature railway runs for just under a mile. Opposite the railway, we found Pease Home Park. This park has been voted the 6th best park in the UK and the 25th best park in Europe. It's certainly a stunner. My favourite attraction in the park was definitely the waterfall. The waterfall cascades over a massive lake where you can pick up a pedalo and go for a paddle. I just had to get my drone out, but I had to be mindful of the dive buying seagulls. On our penultimate day on the East Yorkshire coast, we headed for Robin Hood's Bay. This picturesque village is also known as the Smuggler's Town. In the late 1700s, the bay would have been packed full of ships. The narrow alleyways and secret tunnels of the village were used to bring in vast quantities of gin, brandy, tea and tobacco, and also lace before they were taken to the black market. We took a stroll on the beach and of course Alfie went crazy when he hit the sand. This boy is certainly in his element when he's at the seaside. Just below the Bay Hotel in the harbour is a secret tunnel that you can go inside. I'd have loved to adventure further into it. We stopped at the Bay Hotel for lunch. Well, I say we stopped for lunch, they forgot to do our order, so we resorted to just having a bowl of chips. After lunch, we adventured around the narrow streets and alleyways, which Robin Hood's Bay is full of. Just look how stunning these houses and streets are. It's understandable how Robin Hood's Bay is so popular on social media platforms such as Instagram. Here's a few of my photographs. There's plenty more photos from Robin Hood's Bay on my Instagram page, so go and check it out. We returned to Whitby on our final evening and found a store that sold really good chocolate brownies. We headed back to the beach and Alfie made lots of friends. As you can see here, he was loving running in and out of the sea with them. He was even joined by two Border Terriers, which is the same breed as he is. We couldn't have a week in Whitby without going to a fish and chip restaurant. We chose to go to Papa's on our final night. Mia missed out on her century class whilst we were away in Whitby, so the arcades provided the perfect opportunity with their bright lights and lots of noise. We were told that on a Friday morning at 10am a steam train departs Whitby station on the North Yorkshire Railway. On the way home we decided to stop at Gofland, which was a set for Heartbeat. Gofland train station on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway was also used as Hogsmeade train station in the first Harry Potter film, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Whilst at the station we were lucky to see two trains come into the platform. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. If you've been to any of these places or intend to go to any of them, drop a comment below. Check out my other social media platforms at Nomad for more UK travel content.